Welcome, and I hope that you are having a fantastic day today. We are going to talk about, is this actually a crypto super cycle? This could be fantastic. If it keeps going the way that it already has been over the last few weeks, and we see some things that are happening that have happened in the last few, last 24 hours, 48 hours, the last week, the last two weeks, uh, these things are really exciting. And I hope that you haven't heard about them yet. I hope that I'm the first to tell you about them. But whether that's true or not, let's dig into it. This is great news. Now, the question is, will Bitcoin during this cycle reach 100,000, 300,000, or even a million dollars? Imagine that, a million dollar Bitcoin. Is that even feasible in the next year to two years, maybe three years? Let's take a look and talk about it. So the first thing I want to bring up is Tikkun Olam. Tikkun Olam is ancient Jewish wisdom, and it teaches that the purpose or reason of life is to repair a broken world. So if you can find a, 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 an act of kindness, if you can think of an act of kindness that you can do for a friend, somebody that you live with, a family member, or maybe a neighbor, um, take a moment and do that act of kindness. It will help to repair a broken world. Now, I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. As always with any YouTuber's advice, I recommend you do your own research. Let this video be a launching pad for you to dig deeper and learn more, because that's really the, the ultimate purpose. Now, cryptocurrency involves a substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for every investor. The rest of this paragraph is not just legal mumbo jumbo, but it actually is really good advice for any investment that you make. Um, the whole purpose of this paragraph, even though it sounds like legal mumbo jumbo, it really is there to help you make sure that you don't risk your family's lifestyle in order to make profits with cryptocurrencies or profits with any investment. And ultimately, that's more important. It's more important that you take care of your family, take care of yourself, than to get rich with cryptocurrency. Look, if you do it in a slow and steady manner, it's, it's persistence and, uh, uh, you know, like continuing to do it. It's, if you continue to do it, continue to work at it, you're persistent with it, you will get there. It might take longer than you would like, but hey, the ultimate, the ultimate goal for you and for your family is attainable. Um, so just hang in there and don't try to rush it too fast. So cryptocurrency, this is, this is our website, luminatecrypto.com. I hope that you'll take a look at it. If you do, scroll to the bottom. There's a place for you to put in your email address. If you enter in your email address, we'll keep you updated every time that we post videos um, because not only uh, YouTube doesn't always notify people. As always, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, hit the subscribe button. It does make a difference with the YouTube algorithms. So let's get into this a little bit. $8.7 trillion asset manager BlackRock is exploring Bitcoin as institutions flood crypto. Now think about that. BlackRock has $8.7 trillion under management and they're considering Bitcoin as an investment vehicle. Now, I had to do a little bit of look, digging to, to find out what I'm about to tell you, but I thought this was very interesting. $8.7 trillion. If, if BlackRock takes 1%, 1% of that $8.7 trillion and buys Bitcoin with it, that will purchase all of the Bitcoin on all of the cryptocurrency exchanges all in one purchase. So think about that for a second. What would happen to the price of Bitcoin if Coinbase and Binance and Kraken and KuCoin and all of the other exchanges, PayPal, all of the other exchanges had zero Bitcoin to sell? 
they would they would scramble to go find more Bitcoin to get on the exchange so that they had some liquidity. And you know what? I know that Bitcoin is currently selling for $51,000 per Bitcoin. But if if all of the exchanges had sold out of every Bitcoin they had, do you think the price would stay at 51,000 or could the price get forced up to $100,000? Would that force the price to $300,000 per Bitcoin? Now, I don't think that BlackRock is going to go out there and take 1% and buy all of the cryptocurrency on all of the exchanges all at one time. But if it, if it did happen, that would be kind of unusual and it would create a black swan event in terms of pricing. Typically, what a large company like this is going to do is they're going to ease their way into it. Every day, every week, every month, they're going to be purchasing a little bit more here, a little bit more there, because the truth is they don't want to pay too much for it either. They're like everybody else. They want to bargain. They want to pay the least amount they possibly can. Now, in our current cycle of Bitcoin, we've noticed that the price has gone up much faster than anticipated. If you compare uh, this year's numbers with the numbers during the cycle, the bull run of 2017, it wasn't, it wasn't in January that they hit, uh, I mean, when they hit the previous all-time high of $1,000 Bitcoin, it took them two and a half months before they got to $2,000. And it took weeks and weeks later before they got to $3,000. And so what we've done seeing Bitcoin go to 20,000 and then 40,000, and now it looks like we may be hitting 60,000 before the end of February. That's taken us weeks and we've tripled the price of Bitcoin from its previous all-time high of $20,000. I mean, we're already at at double, two and a half times the previous all-time high of $20,000. How long is it going to take us to hit $60,000 or $100,000 or any of the numbers past that? That It's happening much faster and at a much more accelerated rate than ever before, or at least in the 2017 and the 2013 cycles. So what's causing that? Well, it's things like MicroStrategy um, buying 1.5, actually MicroStrategy currently has $3.6 billion worth of Bitcoin. But this, this article here is about Tesla buying $1.5 billion of Bitcoin. That is a lot of Bitcoin. And what's happening this cycle that has never happened before is we've got a lot of corporations such as MicroStrategy and Tesla and PayPal and Square. All of these different corporations are buying up lots of Bitcoin. PayPal is buying up Bitcoin so that they can offer Bitcoin trading on their platform. Square is buying up Bitcoin so that they can not only do uh, uh, Bitcoin trading, but also they have customers that want to be able to offer Bitcoin as a form of payment for products and services through the Square applications. And then you've got things like MicroStrategy and Tesla all going out and buying billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. I mean, MicroStrategy alone ha currently has somewhere around $3.7 billion worth of Bitcoin. And so these guys are aggressively getting corporations. And what we're beginning to see is corporate FOMO, corporate fear of missing out. So let's dig into this deeper. Now, this is a post by Michael Saylor, who is uh, involved. He's the CEO founder of MicroStrategy. And he said that our MicroStrategy World 2021 conference was a great success with 22,000 registrations. The Bitcoin for Corporations program attracted 8,197 attendees from over 6,917 different enterprises. All sessions are free and uploaded here along with our Bitcoin corporate playbook. Now, here's the big thing that we want to get out of this. I mean, MicroStrategy is a huge business 
their primary customers is, um, you know, the Fortune 500. I mean, it's it's government entities. Uh, the MicroStrategy is involved with the TSA. MicroStrategy is involved with Toyota. MicroStrategy is involved with a lot of Fortune 500 corporations, and they're helping those companies to do business intelligence through data mining and data abstractions and, and data investigation. And that's what MicroStrategy sells as a product. So MicroStrategy World is an annual conference that MicroStrategy holds. And in that conference this year, they had 22,000 people who attended, but they attended online. So, you know, things have changed because of, of you know, the pandemics and different situations. Now, that online conference is now available for free for anyone who wants to watch it. So if you click on these links over here, once you go to uh, MicroStrategy World, you can click on these links and learn about their different programs, their different processes, and their products. At the bottom of this list down here, at the bottom, whoops, let's go ahead and scroll down. I'll get rid of that guy. It should be down here somewhere. Oh, the software I used to cut that out, cut out the, the bottom part of this column. But anyway, there's an icon at the bottom that just simply says Bitcoin. When you click on that icon, it takes you to this page. This page is not conference videos. It's just other videos that, uh, that MicroStrategy has posted online. What I want you to notice here is how much effort MicroStrategy is taking to educate corporations on how to buy Bitcoin. In fact, let's take a look at some of the conference classes, uh, conference sessions that MicroStrategy made available. So the first session for the Bitcoin part of the MicroStrategy World Conference was Bitcoin MicroStrategy with Michael Saylor and Ross Stevens. Now, if you watch this particular uh, segment, uh, it's not too long, it's about 59 minutes, but they dig deep into how, why, why a company should be buying Bitcoin, how buying Bitcoin is going to help the company preserve their assets and preserve their wealth. You know, most of us know that the governments are printing a huge amount of money. And one of the things that MicroStrategy addresses one of the things that's addressed in this conference is how most of these companies have large amounts of money in banks and, and other, other vehicles uh, as part of their treasury. You know, um, Apple has something like a, a trillion dollars. I don't know the actual number. I, I'm trying to recall and I don't recall at the moment, but they have a huge treasury. And so do a lot of large corporations. MicroStrategy in particular has taken over a billion dollars uh, out of their treasury and invested it into Bitcoin. In fact, they went a step further and they are even taking out loans against buildings and other assets that they own in order to buy more Bitcoin. And currently they own 3.67 billion billion dollars worth of Bitcoin and they had a... Um, It's, it's a, a, they've publicly announced that they're, they're willing to set up people to loan them more money to buy more Bitcoin and they put it on a loan with a payment schedule and everything else. And so large investors that are interested in loaning MicroStrategy money, MicroStrategy is aggressively uh, pursuing taking out those loans and increasing their Bitcoin supply which is quite interesting. And that actually was part of this session. In this session, Michael Saylor and Ross Stevens talk about what they're doing as far as uh, taking different assets that the business owns, putting loans on those assets at basically 0% interest or very, very low interest rates because you can get such low interest rates out there today. And then with that money that they're borrowing, they're buying Bitcoin and more and more of it. And so quite interesting. In fact, he talks about how do you incorporate Bitcoin into your P&L? How do you incorporate Bitcoin into your balance statements? I mean, they go through the thing in detail. 
Um, and the other sessions that are available through the Bitcoin for Corporations um, webinars are, I mean, it, they basically cover everything that a business, a company would need to do in order to follow in MicroStrategy's footsteps and purchasing billions of dollars worth of Bitcoin. So why would they do that? Why would they do that? Think about that for a second. That's, that's really important because, you know, here's, here's really what MicroStrategy's business is about. These are the, some of the sessions for MicroStrategy World. Um, you can see that part of their strategy was talking about Pfizer Success Spotlight, Disney ABC Success Spotlight, ServiceNow, TSA, uh, Standard Chartered Bank, et cetera, et cetera. They have a very, very successful business. And you know what? They actually think that with what they're doing with Bitcoin, that they're going to have more income generated from their Bitcoin investments than the income from their regular business, from their regular micro strategy business. Now, isn't that interesting that they're going to use their micro strategy business in order to fund a Bitcoin venture with the expectation that the Bitcoin income, the Bitcoin royalties, the Bitcoin profits are going to exceed the income that they receive from their everyday day-to-day -day, uh, software business. And they've become a billion, a billion dollar software company. Now, part of their strategy in order to make that a reality is they're going the extra mile. They're going to an extreme to help other corporations do the same. Because by taking other corporations and helping them get involved in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, not only do those other corporations end up making a significant amount of money. I mean, I'm, I don't know if BlackRock has contacted the folks at MicroStrategy but they're following the playbook that MicroStrategy has laid out by investing in Bitcoin. And the end result, like I mentioned, all that, all that BlackRock has to do is take 1%, 1% of their assets under management, and that would buy up all of the Bitcoin on all of the exchanges. What if they decide to do 2%? What if they decide to do 5%? Or what if MicroStrategy as we talked about here, they had over 8,000 attendees from 6,900 different businesses, different corporations. What if those businesses and those corporations decide they're going to follow MicroStrategy's approach and delve deeply into buying a lot of Bitcoin? What happens to the price then? So maybe we don't need BlackRock doing 1%. If BlackRock decides to do 0.01%, these other businesses pushing the price up will cause BlackRock to change their mind and say, okay, we don't want to miss out. We want to be in on the, the gains that are happening with this asset class. So we're going to go ahead and invest more into Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Can you see how that snowball would work? It's, it's a really interesting strategy. In fact, when you look out there to this website, Bitcoin Treasuries, we can see what companies have invested and how much they have invested into Bitcoin. Now, there may be other companies. Sometimes a company is a private corporation and they don't have to announce these kinds of numbers. They could be a family office where it's a private family in a business where you know the the uh, people who own Walmart or you know the people who own Apple or or other large wealthy people, um, not large in terms of size but large in terms of their finances, are investing in Bitcoin and investing in cryptocurrency and they can do that privately without reporting it. So the numbers that are on this uh, Bitcoin Treasuries list are numbers that have been reported to the SEC. And you can see up here at the very, very top, we see MicroStrategy with $3.69 billion. Um, that there, That is the today's value of their Bitcoin investments, and that's continuing to grow. Now, when we look at the total amount of money that's down here, we can see that the total amount is $65 billion 
and that's just going to go up. So the real question is, is what is that going to do to this particular cycle? Is it going to get wilder and crazier and cause the price to go farther and faster than we've seen with the 2017 and the 2013 Bitcoin cycles? What will happen to the price? I think it's a fair thing to say that there's a great likelihood that we're going to see the price go up dramatically. And given the fact that we're already at $50,000 Bitcoin today, it's February 18th, 2021. And with $50,000 per Bitcoin in such a short period of time, I mean, it was back in December that uh, we just barely broke the $20,000 price mark. And in about six weeks, we've almost gone two and a half times past the previous all-time high of $20,000. Wow. I, I'm holding on to my hat. I don't know what to expect, but it wouldn't surprise me. I think it's a possible. Now, I, I started the video out. The title in the video was, will we see 100,000, 300,000, or a million dollar Bitcoin? Given that we've gotten so uh, fast and so close to that $100,000 mark, I think it's very, very likely we'll hit that $100,000 mark. Now, this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. In my opinion, I think $100,000 is, is likely and easy and is probably going to happen um, in the coming weeks and months rather than years down the road. Uh, $300,000 Bitcoin, a lot of the YouTubers I like to watch and listen to, they're talking about $300,000 in, say, September, October, uh, possibly a December time frame. I think $300,000 is also quite likely in that time frame. Now, there's not, I've only heard one other YouTuber um, and a couple of other videos, uh, YouTube videos that I've watched, talk about a million dollar Bitcoin or more than a million dollar Bitcoin. I think. Back in January, I, I didn't think that would happen, not in this cycle. I thought maybe someday uh, in my lifetime. Now, look at me. I, I'm not a young guy. I, I've been around the block twice, maybe three times. I, I've lived, I've lived some, a, a good life. I've lived some decent years. But this thing is going to go really fast. That's my opinion. I... I in January, I didn't imagine we would be seeing a million dollar Bitcoin in my lifetime. I thought it would happen someday, maybe, and maybe I wouldn't be around anymore. But I'm wondering if we're going to see it happen in the next year or 13 months. You know, one of the things that I heard on one of the videos I found online with Michael Saylor is he said he doesn't think there's going to be another bear market which means he thinks over between now and the next Bitcoin halving in 2024, he thinks that we're just going to continue to go up the entire time. And given what he's doing with institutions and how institutional interest is really taking off, maybe that is a possibility. Uh, back in January, just a few weeks ago, I, I wouldn't have thought so. But given the current events that have happened in the last four weeks and events that happened, you know, the BlackRock announcement of they have $8.7 trillion in assets under management and them being interested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and having the ability to buy all of the Bitcoin on the exchanges with 1%, 1% of their assets under management. What if they decide to do 2% or 5%? What if they decide they want 10% of their money invested in Bitcoin? They have enough money that they could buy every Bitcoin that exists. The problem is, is that there's a lot of people who hold Bitcoin that won't sell it to them. Not if they know that, my, that, that BlackRock is trying to buy all of the Bitcoin, those guys will just hold on to it, let the price go to the moon, and then they'll sell. And they'll take profits periodically, but they'll live off of taking profits for a really long time. And maybe that's a good strategy for you and I. 
Anyway, this is not financial advice. I haven't even figured out what I think I should do in, in regards to what I just told you about in this video. What should I do with my portfolio? Do I, do I change which cryptocurrencies I'm invested in? Do I increase the amount of crypto I'm invested in? All of these are questions that I'm running through. I hope that today's video has spurred on to you to ask some similar questions and to consider what you're doing. Anyway, I've written, I spent two and a half years now working with an algorithm that runs thousands of mathematical calculations for each recommendation it makes. And I'm using that algorithm to buy and sell crypto on eToro. And if you're interested, you can go to my eToro um, profile page, and that's what this web address is, etoro.com slash people slash lumen8 algo trader. And that'll get you to my profile page. You can take a look at our current stats. So far in the month of February, we're up 65% uh, in just 18 days for the month, which is I, I think that's phenomenal, and it's it's not because my algorithm is so fabulous. Uh, in fact, during the entire month of of uh, February, we've only had we've invest we've got uh, trades on four cryptos, and that's it. And we've just held them so far, and we're up sixty five percent. So until the algorithm tells me or gives me information that we should think about doing something different, I'm going to hold on those four. Uh, uh, cryptocurrencies and I may adjust it and add some other cryptos that are available on eToro. We're kind of looking at that a little bit. eToro has given us a $50 limited bonus that we can offer to you. If you use this link here and create an eToro account and then deposit $200 into your eToro account and then use that $200 because eToro requires a minimum of $200 to copy trade and you copy trade us eToro will give you a $50 bonus for doing that. And so I hope you'll take advantage of that $50 bonus. In the meantime, I want to thank you for watching our video. I hope you got something out of it. I, I take the time to do these. I don't get paid by YouTube for doing them. Um, and I, I do them because I want to help you. And so I hope this is, this is my doing a kindness for somebody by creating this video for you. I am helping to repair a broken world. So tell me, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions, thoughts, comments? I don't care if you disagree with me. All I ask is that you be polite about your disagreements. I'd love to talk to you whether you agree with me or think I'm a raving lunatic. Um, I'm good either way. In the meantime, I hope that you will like, subscribe, and hodl. And hey, do me a favor and have a great day.